Remember the president's voter fraud commission, Chris Kobach, big hoopla. They were going to find out, get to the bottom of it. It got disbanded because there is no widespread voter fraud in this country that affects elections. There are cases here and there, and that should be prosecuted. But there's no widespread voter fraud, not in this country, not now. Again, it cannot be said too often there is no evidence of any consequential voter fraud anywhere, not now, not in decades. But as the president showed during that call this weekend to Brad Raffensperger, it's now a token of faith among Republicans who've mainlined into the body politic using social media. Today, Facebook blocked the president from posting. Yesterday, Twitter suspended his account. It's been restored, I understand. It's not just social media, so-called mainstream outlets like Fox News pumping the same poison, mainstreaming the same lies, gliding over the same bad behavior. Earlier today, it all got too much, even for a diehard conservative Republican, Trey Gowdy. He was surprised when the anchor on Fox he was talking to seemed not to make the connection between the president's speech yesterday and the rioters storming the Capitol. Who told them to do did that? You hear, did you hear the speech? Did you listen to the president's speech yesterday? I did. Uh, then you tell me. Who said that? Who said go fight? Who blamed Mike Pence? Who blamed Republicans? Who said the election was stolen? Shortly before that moment, Fox anchor Brian Kilmeade admitted, quote, the president's behavior has been terrible since the election. But as you saw, old habits die hard. In any case, 13 days before the end of the administration, it's a little late in the game, which as we saw and as we're still seeing, is no game at all. But we, what we witnessed yesterday was not dissent. It was not disorder. It was not protest. It was chaos. They weren't protesters. Don't dare call them protesters. They were a riotous mob, insurrectionist, domestic terrorist. It's that basic, it's that simple. And I wish we could say we couldn't see it coming. But that isn't true. We could see it coming. The past four years, we've had a president who's made his contempt for our democracy our Constitution, the rule of law, clear in everything he has done. He unleashed an all-out assault on our institutions of our democracy from the outset. And yesterday was but the culmination of that unrelenting attack. Now, again, the president just put out a video, uh, in part seeking to justify his actions yesterday. Uh, we're going to show it in its entirety uh, because it is important uh, from a news standpoint, uh, given we have not heard from the president all day today. Uh, but I do just want to you know, give you a heads up. He lies in this video about his actions yesterday, claiming he called in the National Guard right away, uh, claiming he was outraged by what he saw. And we know he's lying not only because of reporting, but because of what he said previously about uh, what he witnessed. And we'll play you what he said Previously, after we play you this, it's about two minutes and 41 seconds. This is the president's latest statement released just a short time ago. I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack on the United States Capitol. Like all Americans, I am outraged by the violence, lawlessness, and mayhem. I immediately deployed the National Guard and federal law enforcement to secure the building and expel the intruders. America is and must always be a nation of law and order. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. To those who engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. We have just been through an intense election and emotions are high, but now tempers must be cooled and calm restored. We must get on with the business of America. My campaign vigorously pursued every legal avenue to contest the election results. My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. In so doing, I was fighting to defend American democracy. I continue to strongly believe that we must reform our election laws to verify the identity and eligibility of all voters and to ensure faith and confidence in all future elections. Now Congress has certified the results. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. This moment calls for healing and reconciliation. 
2020 has been a challenging time for our people. A menacing pandemic has upended the lives of our citizens, isolated millions in their homes, damaged our economy, and claimed countless lives. Defeating this pandemic and rebuilding the greatest economy on Earth will require all of us working together. It will require a renewed emphasis on the civic values of patriotism, faith, charity, community, and family. We must revitalize the sacred bonds of love and loyalty that bind us together as one national family. To the citizens of our country, serving as your president has been the honor of my lifetime. And to all of my wonderful supporters, I know you are disappointed, but I also want you to know that our incredible journey is only just beginning. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Now, think if he had said that to the mob before they marched on the Capitol. Would it have made a difference? Listen to what he actually did say to that mob before uh, they attacked the Capitol. In fact, encouraging them and claiming, making it sound as if he was going to be walking with them toward the Capitol. This is what he said before, just before the attack. We're going to walk down and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down. We're going to walk down anyone you want. But I think right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. Never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength. You have to be strong. As for those people that he called into action that he claimed he was going to be marching with, the ones that Mo Brooks told to, you know, kick some ass. He now says those people have defiled the seat of American democracy. That is quite a change from what he said while it was happening, as he was watching it on television, and then immediately afterward when he made a taped statement. Here's what he said yesterday, just after the attack, while there were still people on Capitol grounds. We love you. You're very special. You've seen what happens. You see the way others are treated that are so bad and so evil. 